Do you want to say Days with Jordan the Lion begins now, or do you want me to say it? All right, neither one of us will say it. Today we are heading to Columbia, South Carolina. We're gonna go visit the home wrestling compound of the fabulous Moolah, probably the most synonymous name in women's wrestling of all time. Oh, here's her neighborhood, Drexel Lake Hills. We're in the neighborhood, and her address at the time was actually 101 Moolah Drive. So right here was the entryway, and this was a whole compound because Moolah was, she was originally a very, very early, early woman's wrestler and a lot of people say if not for her there might not have even been a continuing on wrestling women's business she became champion and began wrestling in the 50s but became champion for 28 years and would actually end up um, training girls having apartments here that the girls could live in and she would train them on the premises originally she started training people on a mattress inside her house, but this is actually the uh, the lake. There you can see the lake on the property. The property was sold a couple of years ago to a ministry, and they gave it a new use for rehabilitating people. You can actually see some of the some of the cottages on the property that they're still using, and that's what some of the girls would have lived in at the time. And there's the main house to the right. Let's see if I can, if they'll let me take a photo of it. Look at the front door, it still says Moolah's Place. So they're very nice here. They actually were nice enough to, uh, I got to see a little bit inside the house, but since people live in the house, they didn't want to invade their privacy. But this was Moolah's house. Right here, and in her later days, Mae Young, the famous wrestler, she was a, um, she had become a Christian evangelist. And when she got out of doing that, she needed somewhere to go. And she came and lived here with Moolah as well. And uh, then eventually they ended up back on WWE doing all those insane stunts. If you, if you were watching in the early 2000s, they were going out there and getting guitars smashed over their head. And Mae Young and Moolah were getting power bomb through tables and all kinds of stuff. Now, like I said, it's um, it's owned by a ministry and it's kind of like a halfway house kind of deal, giving people a second chance. And then there were houses all the way back in there. And there used to be a, uh, a barn, I believe here, that they had the wrestling ring in that they would all train every single day. But I think they tore that down. And then right over here is also another little building. Kind of nice of them to let us see it. Another little apartment. And I had read that the girls had a curfew and if they weren't home by the time it was dark, this gate was closed and they weren't allowed to sleep here. But Moolah would teach them a little bit of everything, life lessons and everything. And also Moolah made all of her own costumes. So she would teach the girls how to do that as well. Now let's go out to where May Young and Mula are buried. While the fabulous Mula was a championship wrestler, her husband was the promoter and the booker. And so they really had their hand completely in the business and you really couldn't do much as a woman wrestler without being involved with them. And he was, his name was Buddy Lee apparently. He was kind of a scummy guy. He used to force some of the girls to sleep with him and things like that. And one day Mula came home 
and he was in bed with one of the women that Mula had trained, so Mula threw him out and developed her own wrestling program and ended up booking girls, training them, doing everything herself. All right, here's our cemetery. Both ladies are buried here at Green Lawn. This should be relatively easy to find because both women are buried beside each other because they were great friends. And uh, Fabulous Moolah used some of that moolah to build a very big memorial for herself. And I'm pretty sure it's this big giant one right here in front of us at the curve. Yep, right there. So here they are together again, together forever. They were, I mean, we'll talk about it. Their stint in WWE was somewhat confusing to me at the time when they came in in the like 1999, early 2000s and some of the things that they went through. But here they are on the right, Miss Johnny Mae Young. She was a pistol. Wow, was she something. She was raised with her father and brothers, and you can see born Johnny Mae Young in Sand Springs, Oklahoma. The daughter of John and Lily Mae Young would become the Great Mae and be considered one of the toughest in the wrestling business. A career that began in 1940 would span seven decades. In 1945, the Great Mae would be the only lady to wrestle champion Mildred Burke to a 30-minute draw in Louisville, Kentucky and was an undefeated U.S. champion lady wrestler. At the young age of 80, the Great May and her partner in the squared circle, the fabulous Moolah, would sign a five-year contract with WWE and together win a pro wrestling match here in Columbia, South Carolina in 2003. Death, where is thy sting? Grave, where is thy victory? We have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. So she was raised with all men and even was the only girl on her school wrestling team. When she was in high school, Mildred Burke, who was mentioned here, was the main female wrestler at that time that anyone knew of. Men were considered kind of like the only real wrestling and they would a lot of times put like a women's match or a midget match or something as kind of like an attraction, something kind of like a novelty. But Mildred Burke had become kind of what the great moolah would become she was the established women's champion and her husband was the promoter booker and if you wanted to get in the business you had to deal with them and um so when may was in high school she went to a wrestling match and challenged mildred burke and they wouldn't let those two wrestle but they had may wrestle someone else and may won and she went on to have an insane career she was so hated um, at times that she would wrestle that they had to put chicken wire all over the ring because people would throw bottles and how she really got it going was during the um, during the war when um, she went to Canada to wrestle and Pearl Harbor was struck and the men were all um, taking off to fight and everything women's wrestling became a thing and she was so so loved to be hated that it really built it into something. Now, she ended up coming back in 1999 with her pal, Moolah. So let's talk about Moolah a little bit, who also has a similar story. Mary Lillian Ellison was the only girl in her family and her father took her to a wrestling match when she was a little girl and she loved wrestling and wanted to become a wrestler. And her dad didn't want her to, so he, uh, <laughs> he told her, no you're not allowed to do it. So she took off and eloped and ended up becoming pregnant. The marriage didn't work out, but she went and found a promoter. Um, it was actually Mildred Burke's husband and tried to get into the business. And he basically made it clear that she would have to sleep with him to get in the business. And so she said, I'm not going to get in the business that way. Went to New York and talked to another promoter and he was willing to work with her. But he said, 
why do you want to be a wrestler? And she said, I want to make some money. I want to make that moolah. And so he named her the moolah, and she would eventually become the first woman to wrestle in Madison Square Garden when women had been banned from wrestling in Madison Square Garden. So over here, you can see that this is her final resting place. Her and May lived together at that compound until Fabulous Moolah passed away in 2007. May ended up living until 2014. But here it says, born Lillian, Mary Lillian Ellison in Tokyo, do South Carolina. Sorry for those of you that live there and I don't know how to pronounce it. The daughter of Henry and Mary Ellison was raised by her father and 12 brothers, a beloved mother and grandmother, also loving and appreciative of family, friends, and fans. The goddess of the squared circle won her first pro wrestling match in 1949, won the ladies world championship in 1956, and held the championship for 29 years. She was inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame in 1995. At the young age of 80, the fabulous Moolah signed a five-year contract in 2003 with Vince McMahon and won a pro wrestling match on her 80th birthday in Columbia with her tag team partner, May. <laughs> and then it says at the bottom, doubt sees obstacles, faith sees the ways, doubt sees the blackest night, faith sees the day. Doubt dreads to take a step, faith soars on high. Doubt questions who believes, faith answers I. And it says, if tears, if tears could build a stairway in memories, a lane I'd walk right up to heaven and bring you back again. Now, to the left of her, in her plot, was Diamond Lil, Katie Glass. She was a believe technically a midget wrestler and she was super close to moolah lived in the house with moolah and was trained by moolah and it says born katie g glass in richmond virginia the daughter of fred and ethel glass would become the first midget champion in lady wrestling katie was named diamond lil in the ring but her dedicated friend and trainer named her the damned midget <laughs> the fabulous moolah whom Katie called Ma would train her to become a champion on a midget team. It is love that asks, that seeks, that knocks, that finds, and that is faithful to what it finds. And one of the reasons that there's a bench in here was Moolah said that she wanted that bench so that people could come visit her and if it rained like it does in South Carolina, they won't get wet because they'll be sitting underneath the shelter now why on earth did these ladies in their 70s go back to wrestling on a major forum and actually how did moolah lose her championship so cindy lopper in the 80s cindy lopper met lou albano and she was a wrestling fan and wanted to get involved and this became the birth of the rock and wrestling and so they did this storyline where Cindy Lauper was going to back Wendy Richter, who, little history, was actually trained by Moolah. And Lou Albano was going to have Moolah wrestle for him. And so the reason that was going to happen is because Vince McMahon was really trying to make WWF wrestling at the time take off and make it a mainstay, kind of like a mainstream thing. And he knew that Moolah was the most widely considered women's champion in the world, technically, According to this, she would be the longest reigning champion of anything ever, 29 years. But he knew that if she lost to Wendy Richter, that that could um, add a lot of pizzazz to wrestling. They would have this beautiful women's champion and a whole new, you know, youthful movement. So he wrote her a big check. Um, Moolah was aging and she knew even though she was still, you know, saw herself as a star, she knew that Vince McMahon Jr. was going to do something big and that by selling her championship, basically losing the match, that not only would that make him happy, she would get a big, huge paycheck, but that 
that would basically buy Vince's loyalty for life. She would be treated like gold forever. And that's what happened. So when Wendy Richter became the champion and they felt that um, apparently she was asking for more money, she um, thought that she deserved to be paid kind of like one of the male stars like Hulk Hogan or someone. And they decided to double cross her. And they had her wrestle the spider lady and um, the spider lady was a masked wrestler that Wendy had wrestled before but when they wrestled it looked like a different body and she got a pin she got rolled up in a pin claims that it wasn't a three count but that they called it that and when they took the mask off it was moolah and so some people say even though moolah was responsible for the women's wrestling history and it being built up to what it was with that she they they fell kind of killed any momentum the women's movement had in wrestling at that point. Now they brought her back for a thing with Jeff Jarrett in 1999 and Jeff Jarrett ends up smashing a guitar over Moolah's head and then putting Mae Young in his signature move. <laughs> and, um, and this got such a huge response that both ladies wanted to come back. This wasn't, believe it or not, it wasn't something that Vince McMahon, all those guys were like, oh, this was great ratings. We gotta bring them back and exploit it. They loved it. They were lifelong entertainers and they thought it was great and they could still take all the abuse and the bumps and everything. So they signed up. They're like, hey, we wanna do it. And the crazier the storyline, the better. I mean, there was a time where Mae Young gave birth to a hand. I remember one New Year's she gave birth to Hornswoggle, the New Year baby. And they had her wrestling and doing all kinds of stuff. They had her had them doing nightgown matches and taking their tops off and doing all kinds of crazy stuff. And even at one point, um, Mae Young got a power slam through a table. And when you ask them about it, when you like listen to podcasts now, the people that were programming all this stuff at the time that were in charge of creative, they said, it was all these ladies. These ladies wanted to do this stuff. And they would say like, you know, we would say, you shouldn't be doing this here. I mean, that's, that's kind of extreme. And they would say, they had something called the three minute rule, these two. That if they were supposed to be doing something with any of the male wrestlers or anything, and the guys weren't bringing it in three minutes, these ladies would decide not to sell for them, which means when they got hit, they would act like they weren't hurt. And they would, they said, if you're not gonna actually hit us and do it and entertain these folks, then we'll make it obvious that you're not and then you'll have to. So it all came down to them. These were really fiery ladies and backstage they would say like, hit me or I'm gonna punch you in the mouth. Or I mean, they, they really were like that and they were a total hoot. <laughs> and now they're resting here together. Anybody that watched that Attitude Era of Wrestling knows exactly what I'm talking about. The kind of crazy antics they put these two through. But then, like I said, it's crazy because you almost thought when you watched it, gosh, they must need the money. But you don't take into consideration both of these women had been wrestling in the business for <laughs> over 50 years. At the time that they were brought back, they were like 60 years in. And they just loved being entertainers and they could still do it. So they kept doing it. Great to come see both of their graves today. Rest in peace, Diamond Lil, Fabulous Moolah, and Mae Young. These two did more for the sport than probably anyone else in women's professional wrestling. And then if you go right through where the bench is, and past where Moolah's crypt is, these are for her children. Her daughter, well, the one in the middle was her only daughter, Mary Austin. But you can see Susie Lane, Andy Guyton, and right in the center was Mary Austin, who she had when she was very young. And I believe Mary Austin was also a female wrestler, trained by Moolah. Well, my friends, we're gonna call it a day. Hope you enjoyed this vlog. Kinda cool to go out and see the compound that she trained everyone at and that she lived and that 
her and May live together with Diamond Lil. Kind of a little added bonus today. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you next time from Columbia, South Carolina. Have a great night and goodbye.